Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, IPAM, for organizing such an interesting conference in such, in particular, in such a time. And thanks also for the invitation so that I have the opportunity to uh, share with you some of my results. So the title of this is um, Causing Rates for Non-Local Current Heated Equation. So it is a joint work with uh, uh, Yuan Gao and Tao Luo. Okay. So um, the, um, the purpose of this work, I mean, it is sort of a stem from um, uh, uh, mathematical curi curiosity. Uh, of course, uh, this causing rates for various pattern, uh, pattern uh, uh, systems, there are a lot of uh, results. And then also there's uh, many um, uh, activities for non-local equations. So we are just curious whether this, um, uh, many of the techniques uh, for local equation, whether can be extended to a non-local case. Okay. And then at the end, I will mention some open problems also. Okay, so now as a motivation, so... Okay, as a motivation, we want to study this kind of uh, pattern formations. So, uh, of course, it happens everywhere, almost in any many uh, physical systems and biological systems, but just to be just to be specific. So, um, for this kind of uh, pat patterns, uh, you see that there are lots of microstructures, and these microstructures will uh, evolve in time. And then, again, to be specific, the system that I'm looking at, mostly, they are, I mean, they are driven by uh, energy, and the energy is concentrated on the boundary. So these are uh, interface-driven systems. Okay. So then, uh, of course, uh, whenever you have a boundary, then you have uh, energy. So it, if it is energy-driven, then the system will try to reduce the energy. And hence, uh, the 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 one way to reduce the energy is to reduce the boundary area or boundary volume, depending on what dimensions. Okay. So so uh, so given this, uh, then as time goes by, the length scale will try to increase. And if uh, upon increase, then the total service energy per unit volume or per unit area will, will try to decrease in time. So there are some uh, various uh, examples so that you have uh, various phase and then uh, bubbles, and then they will interfere, in, interact with some field. And then this is some um, mixing of uh, different fluids. And then this is uh, some uh, grain boundaries or volatile cell evolutions. Okay. So then, uh, so uh, to capture this uh, coarsening rates, uh, what do I mean? The causing rates means that so sub, there is a typical length scale, and it's not uh, so far. Uh, it's not uh, very precisely defined. When you see it, you know what a length scale means. So since the system will try to evolve such that the length scale will try to increase, so uh, very often the length scale by some self similarity structures of the equations, the length scale will increase like t to the alpha, and we want to first of all characterize this alpha which very often by some heuristic argument, you can get it by uh, just looking at the equation, by looking for self-similarity solutions. But then uh, we also want to prove that this is the case. Okay, so this is the, the motivation. And, and uh, of course, I'm not going to uh, analyze all kinds of pattern formation. So to be specific, uh, it's a more of a, this a phase transition, uh, phase transition systems. And you have a two, uh, the system have two phases or it can be multiple phases, but just uh, for two for now. So there is already, uh, there is a very common uh, model uh, try to uh, analyze this kind of phase transition systems. A common model is make use of this Allen Kahn function, and it is given by the following form. So there is a Dirichlet norm, try to regularize the derivative of the function, and then there's a non-local term, try to uh, capture or try to uh, um, uh, constrain the u to be some sets, and then there's a parameter. Okay, so then the the key feature of this is that uh, there's a parameter which is uh, very very small, so that this becomes a singularly perturbed problem, and then the, this w uh, is uh, like a double well potential. It's a one minus u square whole thing square. So then you have two minimum. One is minus one and one. So if you want to minimize or at a consider a low energy state because uh, the minimum of W is a minus one and one, so the U will very much like to converge to minus one and one. Uh, but with uh, because of this regularization, there's some smooth transition, okay? So then heuristically, this is just uh, uh, the low energy state will be the, uh, the whole domain will be partitioned into domains with uh, state one and minus one that make a rapid but smooth transitions. So uh, if many, as many of you may have recall, um, in day one, 
of this conference, of this workshop, um, Professor Jessica Lin already have uh, given a very good uh, uh, introduction on this Alan Kahn function and some uh, further results. So I will just be brief and then set up the, set up the notation uh, for uh, useful for, for, my, for my talk. Okay, so then the, uh, this is a singularly perturbed problem. And uh, as epsilon goes to zero, then the, what's the limiting description? So the, in the limit, so there's a notion called gamma convergence. Uh, so here I am not going to get into the details. So it's just a, conver a notion of convergence of the energy to the limit, there's a limiting description. So since all the energy are concentrated on the boundary, so it's a natural that uh, the, the limiting description of this energy will converge to the parameter. Okay, and this has been proved uh, in various versions uh, by Modica, Motola, Peter Sternberg, and uh, some other, uh, with, even with convergence rates. So, um, so in this framework. So this is the uh, static, static case, just looking at energetic description. Okay, so now here, uh, then uh, in the limit, U completely, because of this uh, constraint W, U completely takes value one and minus one, but make a transition and then the boundary completely, uh, the energy completely is uh, supported on the bound. Okay. So that's uh, the um, energetic description. But it's even more interesting, just given this functional, then you can study all kinds of dynamics with appropriate uh, modeling. So the dynamics are with respect to this Allen Kahn functional. So by endowing the system, the underlying state space with different uh, gradient flow, you can get various kinds of uh, interesting geometric and uh, more physical uh, 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 model. So if you look at the L2 gradient, L2 gradient, then that's the classical Allen Kahn, then as epsilon goes to zero, uh, then um, it will converge to motion by mean curvature. Again, uh, I'm sorry that I didn't put a very comprehensive reference uh, because uh, uh, these are all more or less classical results. And then, uh, so yeah, and then there's a, a whole sequence of uh, references uh, available yeah, if needed. So the conversion motion by mean curvature, there's a boundary that the normal velocity equals to the uh, mean curvature. And if you endow with the H minus one gradient flow, okay. uh, and uh, written in the equation form, so this is the Laplacian of the first variation of the energy. So this is uh, what I call the Kahn-Helian equation. Then in the limit, as epsilon goes to zero, this will converge to the moulin circa model. So the, it's a, it's a uh, non-local, I mean, the equations are local, but it's a couple with fields. So then in, there's a domain, there's an interior and exterior. The interior solve the Laplace equation, there's a potential function, solve the Laplace equation inside and outside. And then uh, at the boundary, it equals to the mean curvature. So this is called sort of like a undercooling effect, surface tension effect. And then a normal velocity is given by this conservation law. So the moving circuit. Then you can also uh, do uh, another version, the degenerate version uh, of this um, uh, H minus one with the degenerate mobility. And this M of U is not uniformly positive, but equals to zero uh, when you reach uh, one and minus one. Of course, it's not any function. There's some appropriate choice and this will converge to a surface diffusion. So in a limit, uh, it has a boundary and it uh, the norm, so this is a completely local geometric motion. Uh, the normal velocity is the minus Laplacian of mean curvature. Okay. I mean, this is a fourth order geometric flow, then many things are not clear, and there are many, many interesting questions to be answered. So, but uh, here, these are the classical uh, quick overview of a uh, local descript a description of local dynamics that with a different uh, inner product, you can get different geometric uh, evolutions. Okay, so then um, now, um, okay, so just, as a, uh, just to go back to the overview of what we need to do. So if we look at the pattern formations, um, then depending on the dynamics, the link scale will increase, uh, will evolve in time, will increase in time. And we want to look at how does it increase. So, and it turns out for kahn Healy equation, uh, this is a diffuse interface. And then for the sharp interface, uh, moulin circa the link scale will increase like t to the one third. And for degenerate kind of heated, uh, in the sharp interface is uh, the uh, surface diffusion, it will increase like t to the one quarter. And these exponents are sharp because uh, we can find uh, a self-similarity solution for these equations. And or the equation is invariant under this kind of a scaling behavior. 
Okay, and then this uh, so. Uh, these uh, are actually made rigorous uh, in general form by Kong Otto, this, uh, uh, this work in the early um, 21st century, and which will, uh, the strategy will follow quite closely. So they do give a weak version of this statement, the link scale increase with certain parameter. But it turns out, I mean, these, uh, these are highly nonlinear equations. It's very hard to point, to give a point-wise estimate for this uh, link scale. Uh, whether it really increased. So what they do is uh, to express this information using this energy. So they, what they can, because energy is, uh, uh, in this system, the energy is captured by the uh, surface area and the surface area is related to the link scale. And so equivalent statement of this uh, link scale increase is the same as energy bounded from below. Okay, so later on, I will certainly be more precise what they actually prove and their strategy. So this is a, a quick overview of uh, the Kung Auto uh, statement that we, uh, we are going to see whether this can be extended to the non-local case. Okay, so now, uh, so let's, uh, let me introduce a non-local model. So uh, this is the non-local Allen Kahn functional that we are going to study. So now here is the, um, uh, this is sort of like a non-local Dirichlet norm with a parameter S and this is the double well potential. And then, uh, then uh, and functional analytically, this, this is um, in the local case is uh, H1, now H1 norm and a non-local case is HS norm, HNS squared. Okay, and S is between zero and one. And then if you look at this a singular, singular kernel, uh, the behavior is that when S is a small, close to zero, then the, it's, uh, it's less singular but it's more non-local in large distance. And when S is close to one, then it's a more singular, but more local uh, at large distance. I mean, it's more localized. Okay? So there is a sort of a dichotomy. And then uh, similar to the fact that the uh, Dirichlet functional um, give you a Laplacian, and then this HS norm, the first variation, give you a fractional Laplacian, okay? given by this, uh, in, by this expression. And then the dichotomy between small S and big S is exactly uh, captured by this value one half, and then when s is less than one half, one half this functional this integral makes sense for any u. When s is bigger than one half, then this only makes sense in the principal value uh, case. Okay, and then just uh, make sure. Uh, okay, uh, this is just as a side remark. Uh, later on, when we do when I try to do estimate energy and make sure the energy is finite, uh, we look at the periodic domain. And to capture the non-local uh, interaction in periodic domain, then the integral we have is, uh, we, we just for simplicity, we take the integral over the torus for x variable and y variable is the whole domain. But th this, is not uh, this is not the only way. You can always do a subtraction of n state at infinity, but this is, we found it convenient to, to for our analysis so that we don't need to worry about the boundary conditions. Okay, so this is the non-local Allen Kahn function. And as I say, uh, recently there is a wide range of activities for non-local equations. And so I will just point out two results that is more relevant to our work. So this is a non-local minimal surface, first introduced by Cavarelli, uh, uh, Roker, uh, Joffrey, and Sabine, uh, 2010. They introduced this uh, notion of a non-local minimal surface. So there's a characteristic set, there's a set, there's a boundary, and u is the characteristic uh, function of this uh, set, then they define the surface energy as this HS norm. And this is exactly, exactly this uh, HS or the non-local Dirichlet norm. And it turns out uh, to be further enhanced later that uh, the non-local term actually doesn't play a role. The only way, the only reason non-local, uh, this local term is there is to constrain the u to be one and minus one. Okay, so that is the non-local minimal surface in the static description. And then again, of course, there are lots of regularity results and uh, properties of uh, non-local minimal surfaces that people have continued to study. Then uh, for dynamics, so there's a non-local thresholding scheme uh, introduced by Cavarelli and Suganidis. That uh, so thresholding scheme is a very simple uh, algorithm to study uh, uh, geometric evolutions. So the algorithm is very simple. You take a set. Consider its characteristic functions, uh, one inside and uh, minus one outside. Then you, you try to uh, diffuse it using a kernel 
So this is a zero one, uh, u0 is the first state uh, at time zero, u1 is at uh, delta t. Uh, so you, uh, this assign is just uh, zap this function to one and minus one. You take an initial characteristic function, you smooth it out using a heat kernel. And what they did is that you use the heat kernel for the non-local heat equation with the S Laplace. Then you threshold it one uh, positive becomes one and negative becomes minus one. So you have a algorithm goes from zero and one. So these are very simple uh, algorithm. And what they prove is, so you, if you go through this algorithm, u1, u0, u1, u2, each time use times the delta t. And as uh, delta t goes to zero, and uh, what they can show is that as s between zero and one half, it converts to non-local mean curvature flow. And when s is bigger than one half, converts to local mean curvature flow. So among all these uh, results uh, on non-local equation, I think these two uh, results, uh, I mean, capture the geometrical flavor of these uh, non-local operators. And then we, are, we will take it as a starting point to study the uh, non-local Kahn-Hilliard equations. Okay, so uh, then just to uh, understand more about these uh, properties of the non-local functional, so it is a gamma convergence of this uh, non-local uh, uh, functional uh, study by Savin Vodinoji. So consider su suitably rescaled uh, non-local equation, non-local Allen Kahn functional, depending on the value of s, okay. it will gamma converge. When s is less than one half, it will gamma converge to the fractional uh, parameter. And then for s bigger than one half, you converge to the classical uh, parameter. The classical parameter is just uh, the area. I mean, if you assume everything is nice and smooth, and then a more uh, functional analytical way to describe this, this is just the BD norm of, of the function. And now u is uh, goes from minus one to one. Okay. So let me point out uh, just a quick remark, and uh, the proof actually. Uh, uh, it turns out uh, the proof of the uh, it's harder to prove the classical convergence in the classical to the classical case, but it's much easier to, to prove in the, the gamma convergence when s is less than one half. And when s is less than one half, the limit is just exactly the HS uh, norm. It's just uh, the first term, and the second term doesn't play a role. And then, the, as I say, the second term, the only function it does is just to uh, constrain the function. With, because of the one over epsilon constrained the function to one and minus one. Okay. And this is very easy to prove uh, purely, uh, I guess, purely because of the fact that uh, uh, piecewise piece continuous function belongs to HS when S is less than one half. So the, the proof is just a couple of lines. <laughs> and for, but then for the, the, on the other hand, the convergence to a classical case is much harder. Okay. So that's an energetic uh, description. So, uh, okay, so there's a few more, um, just uh, as a reminder, so this uh, HS, uh, this is the fractional parameter, is exactly the HS norm. And then there's a mean curvature, S mean curvature is given by the, you take the first variation, and it is very easy, this, uh, just like the Laplacian, fractional Laplacian, for uh, uh, piecewise continuous functions. Okay, and then uh, you can also easily see there's some scaling uh, properties of these parameters and mean curvature. The parameter, the S parameter of the ball scales like R to the N minus two S and mean curvature, S mean curvature scale one over S uh, R to the two S. So this will come in handy when we do some scaling argument. Okay, so now these are energet uh, energetic description. And so now for, um, for dynamics, so this is uh, what uh, this is our starting point. So we look at the uh, non-local Kahn-Hilliard equations, and the way this is our our starting. There are many, of course, there are many ways you can introduce non-local equations, and the way we our starting point is more or less follow this uh, classic uh, physical law, fixed law. Uh, U t is uh, plus a diverge, uh, conservation divergence of flux equal to zero, and flux is equal to a negative gradient of chemical potential. And chemical potential is the first variation of the energy. So this is how we, um, we this is our starting point. We start from this fixed law and uh, fill in the gaps. Then formally, then this uh, will converge uh, to the non-local Moulin-Sakurka model. 
that uh, uh, very similar to a classical case. And uh, in, in the interior, it's uh, solve a Laplace equation. There's a potential function. And on the boundary, the, 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 the only difference is that on the boundary, the potential is uh, uh, equals to the non-local mean curvature. Okay, and then there's uh, the normal velocity is given by this uh, uh, conservation law. Okay, so again, uh, let me point out uh, this description is uh, only formal, and then there's uh, not yet a uh, um, rigorous proof whether I mean rigorous proof this is true. But of course, we believe this is true, and all the results that we know of, and including our results. Uh, it's sort of like a consistency check that uh, this is the right uh, limiting description, but uh, rigorously this is not uh, uh, not proved yet. Uh, whether this uh, how to com the convergence. So at the end, I will mention some plausible approach and plausible results that uh, uh, that leads to this direction. But but so this is just an analogy that uh, uh, we can study in non-local uh, cantilever equations or non-local moving circular models. So this is not the only way to write down non-local can so-called non-local can Hilliard. And then there's another version um, uh, given by uh, Kang Ken Zhu in his thesis, a student of Bob Kong. He considered somewhat different, slightly different version. So his uh, chemical potential, he, he considered a local Allen Kahn functional, but then the diffusion is non-local. Okay, so uh, there, there's a um, sim, uh, simpler reason for these, and then there's uh, in, in their analysis, uh, because of the local Allen Kahn equations, so they have lots of uh, uh, analysis from the local case, like Modica, Motola tricks they can use, but then uh, their uh, diffusion is more complicated. Okay? And then the, they also have formal written down the non, their version of non local modulus curve uh, that. Um, uh, interior, we solve a Laplace equation, and then uh, on the boundary, V is equal to classical mean curvature, but then this uh, conservation law is a little bit more complicated. Okay, so each point has its own difficulty. So, uh, so but uh, let me just uh, go back. So in our version, we start from this uh, classical physical law, fixed law, then we try to do analysis for this particular model. Okay, so then just uh, to make sure that we get a result that is a sharp or that is a physically reasonable, then if you look at this uh, uh, non-local moulin circuit model that uh, Laplace inside and outside, and then uh, this uh, undercooling with uh, this uh, conservation law, and it's very easy to see that uh, this equation is invariant under the following change of space and time scales. Change the space by lambda and T by lambda to 2S plus two, so this naturally leads to the fact that the length scale will increase like t to the one over two s plus two. So this is uh, sort of like the uh, if you get the exponent, uh, it's the same as this, and then we expect that that is a sharp exponent. Okay. So then that is the quick overview of the model, and then what exponent? Uh, uh, okay. So this is only true for when s is less than one half. When s is bigger than one half, then we get a classical case that that's uh, one third. So um, then, so what is the uh, technical strategy? So as I mentioned, we uh, by and large follow the strategy of uh, Kong and Otto's approach. I'm going to explain a little bit their approach and uh, be more precise. Then, uh, as I say, we are just uh, out of mathematical curiosity, curiosity whether this approach will work for the non-local case. So first of all, um, there, approach, uh, there are a couple of ingredient, key ingredients. The first ingredient is the link scale of the pattern. So um, it's very hard to give a very precise thing. scale is a very weak notion. So uh, then they introduce this uh, negative norm, negative uh, uh, um, gradient norm uh, defined by duality. Okay? And this is sort of like a W1 infinity, the dual of W1 infinity. Okay. And in fact, uh, just to point out, you don't need to specifically use this one. And the key property that is needed is that uh, this, uh, link, uh, this link scale of a function u, if you rescale by lambda, it uh, rescales space by lambda, and then the links in, uh, is uh, factored out by lambda. So it's very, this is very easy to verify. And then it just like uh, uh, grows linearly. So um, 
so any in a sense, any functional that satisfy this property, you can legitimately call it a length scale. And which one you use then depends on the structure of the equation. And it turns out for the Kahn-Heeley equations uh, in the in the original work of Kohn Otto uh, for the Kahn-Heeley equations and uh, 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 Kahn-Heeley with degenerate mobility, they found out that this is more convenient. And then uh, for more uh, elliptic type or more uh, uniform elliptic type, then you might just use uh, h minus one norm. That's that's also fine as long as they any norm that satisfies this uh, this uh, scaling property. So that's the first notion, and the second is that the energy of the system. So here, the natural, the, there's, most, there's no other energy, it's just uh, an Kahn energy for the Kahn Heliot. And uh, so as I say, uh, this energy uh, heuristically, um, as, in, as in total, it, it captured the uh, energy of the interface. So um, if you look at the energy density, so uh, in a unit area, the, uh, the more surface area you have, the more energy. But then the more surface area you have, that means that a smaller length scale. So it's natural to have this uh, energy and length scale, they grow inversely proportional. Okay. But of course, I guess uh, for a specific problem, you might have different powers. But in their work, uh, they, they uh, recognize this fact that uh, E energy and length scale, they roughly uh, uh, grow, uh, have this, uh, have this uh, relationship. But uh, even with this idea, uh, still it's uh, extremely difficult to give a point-wise estimate. So, uh, okay, so, uh, so uh, let me just point out. When length scale increases t to the one-third, then it's equivalent to energy decays like t to the minus one-third. Okay, so that's sort of like a heuristic uh, motivation for their, uh, or driving their, their approach. Um, then, um, yeah, but as, as I say, it's very, for these kind of nonlinear systems, it's uh, extremely hard to give a point-wise estimate. So what they have, Kong Otto's approach is that they have a weak notion, a weak lower bound version of this uh, uh, energy uh, co uh, coarsening rate. So what they have is that the time integral or time average of energy square is bounded from below by the time uh, integral of t to the minus one third square. So that's that's their rigorous version. So they can rigorous prove this version that the weak integral formulation and the energy uh, bounded from below time in time average sense. So uh, then the interpretation then it's up to you. So uh, then this is more reasonable to say that uh, energy is bounded from below t to the minus one third. And then if energy and length scale sort of growth proportionally, then then uh, even uh, then length scale is less or equal to t to the one third. Okay, so, uh, so, but uh, in their work, uh, the rigorous statement is this integral estimate. Okay, so in a sense, what they show is that the energy will decay, will go to zero, but then they, they cannot decay too fast. And then there is a sharp bound that they have. Okay, and just uh, another remark is that this is a lower bound, of course, for calculus of variation and, and dynamics, people would like to have a sharp uh, matching upper bound and lower bound. And in general, this approach uh, is unlikely to, uh, yeah, for obvious reason that you cannot get upper bound for energy. You cannot show the upper bound of energy with decay because uh, this energy landscape is extremely complicated. You can easily construct uh, stationary solutions, critical points of the energy, which are extremely unstable, but mathematically, mathematically they exist. So you cannot, uh, you cannot easily have uh, upper bound uh, for for energy decay uh, because of existence of a critical point. Okay, but uh, yeah, I mean you can think about adding noise, but that's a different story. Okay, so then, uh, at, uh, so there's a, a heuristic description and at a technical level, so they, their work in, involved three lemmas. One is uh, interpolation inequality. So instead of E is equal to one over L, what they can show is that E times L is bounded from below. Okay. The second is a dissipation inequality that relates the uh, time dynamics of length scale is bounded by the negative of the Time, uh, time to rate of energy, so dissipation. And then, and then with one and two, uh, that's basically the core of the analysis. And of course, there's a next lemma, uh, next uh, technical uh, ODE lemma. So with one and two, then they can lead to this uh, inequality. So this, this is a, 
uh, purely from ODE and you can just given one and two lead to this. Okay. Uh, before I continue, so let me just say um, uh, some other related work using this approach. Um, so Kohn Otto originally proved this for the current Heliot and also the degenerate current Heliot for surface diffusion. Then uh, Kong and Yan, they also extend this, uh, consider this uh, epitaxial growth and multi-component system. And Brené also says, and later on with uh, Slapchev, they also uh, analyze uh, demixing uh, of a binary viscous fluid. Then LC and Slapchev um, analyze the mean curvature flow of a Voronoi diagram. And then of course for mean curvature flow, the exponent is t to the one half. Okay, so these are, uh, approaches uh, results that uh, sort of make use of uh, uh, this Kong auto approach, which is quite quite uh, robust. So that's why I want to see whether we can do it for the non-local case. And so the, to everything we feel after we look into this approach, the everything uh, we feel is captured or is uh, hinged upon this uh, inter interpolation inequality. And in the local case, uh, Kung Otto, what they can prove is that, uh, so this is the L, the uh, W1 infinity dual norm, gradient minus one norm, and then this is the energy. And what they can show is uh, big O equal to one. So that's L times E, big O equal to one. But at a formal level, uh, there's a much easier version. And then uh, if you just replace U by a uh, set of finite parameter, a characteristic function of sets of finite parameter, uh, it takes on value of one minus one and one, so essentially, uh, the following is a simpler version, the L times the uh, parameter, they go equal to integral of U, okay? Because U is a one or minus one, so this is basically one, okay? So um, this version is easier, is, is much easier uh, to understand in the sense that if we set this uh, minus one U to be a function, suppose if we let this to be minus one U to e is, is actually a function, then if by just counting the number of derivatives, you get this, uh, this is sort of equivalent to this uh, inequality. This is exactly one special case of the gagliardo nuremberg inequality. Okay. But of course, uh, we couldn't, uh, or Kung Otto doesn't really use this uh, version because uh, this, this function might not, uh, is not uh, well-defined, but, uh, but uh, in spirit, it's similar to this uh, classical result, the special case of the classical result. Okay, so so we, we just want to see how to so the to see whether this works for the non-local case, uh, then this uh, interpolation inequality is sort of the key. Okay, so what we have is that uh, for this uh, coarsening rates for non-local kind here equation that I have written down before. So for s between zero and one half. Okay. Then this non-local energy, we have a similar result that uh, time average integral, average integral of the energy is bounded from below by the time average of this uh, t to the minus s, uh, s plus one. And this is true for s between zero and one half. Okay. And then for s is bigger than one half, uh, then uh, we have a similar result. But I want to point out that uh, here at this stage, Technically, we are not able to prove the same inequality with the non-local operator, non-local energy function. So this is purely for technical reason. And so sometimes a uh, uh, local case is easier, but in this case, uh, the non-local estimate, even though when S is bigger than one, we expect it to resemble very much like the classical case. Strictly speaking, we are not able to prove the uh, non-local version when E is the non-local Allen Kahn function. Just to be specific, so then uh, the interpolation inequality in a non-local case, what we have is that uh, energy, when S is less than one half, we have uh, uh, energy times L to the power two S is bounded from, uh, is uh, bigger than one. Okay, and then when S is bigger than one half, so as I say, we, we are not able to do it for the non-local case, so we just uh, motivate by the classical theory. We expect that it converts to a sharp a classical interface limit. So we just use this as the BV norm. Okay, so then BV times length scale is bounded uh, from below. As I mentioned, this is a resemble the uh, classical Nuremberg uh, 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 Gagliardo uh, result. Okay, so then this is the uh, main result with this exponent. Okay, so now uh, here's the causal rate for energy. 
uh, when s is between one half and one, we sort of we get the exponent one third, which is the same as the classical modulus occurrence, which we expect. And then for s between zero and one half, then we get this energy exponent, which s uh, the energy decays uh, with exponent t to the minus s over s plus one. And then uh, going back to the length scale, uh, so this length e, um, uh, this by energy uh, interpolation inequality, the length scale uh, heuristically decays like uh, increases like t to the power one over two s plus one. Okay, and then here is this uh, sort of like a uh, curve for the exp uh, causing a rate for uh, for length scale. Okay. And again, this is a sharp result because we know, as I uh, uh, as I've explained before, there is a self similarity, self similar solution, or the equation is uh, invariant under uh, this uh, kind of scaling exponent. So this is the uh, uh, so we we expect that this is the correct result, and everything he points to the right direction, as I mentioned. Even though not all the technical details, technical existence and well positions result are, are resolved. Okay, so given the time, so maybe as I since I mentioned that uh, the interpolation inequality is the key, so maybe I will just uh, even though uh, we won't be able to follow all the steps, so maybe just some um, uh, key steps uh, outline how to prove the interpolation inequality. So how to prove uh, this uh, energy times link scale with appropriate power power uh, bounded from below. So um, then um, uh, one minus, uh, so given a u uh, takes, uh, is a characteristic function and you uh, smooth it out by some convolution operator. Uh, so with a compact support with a, a com convolution function uh, with a, a diameter epsilon with a ball of epsilon. So uh, by some um, convexity argument, then it's, uh, we can, uh, it's very easy to say one minus the average of u square is bounded by the energy. Okay, and then the key is how to estimate this uh, this integral of u square, average of integral of u square, and you can split up as uh, u epsilon square and uh, u minus u epsilon square, and u is uh, this continuous function, and if you smooth it out by epsilon, then it is um, uh, it's uh, natural to expect that this kind of result, one over epsilon, and then there's a length scale. Okay, so this is just a smoothing of uh, this continuous function. And then there's some fudge factor bounded by the energy. So the key is how to analyze the difference between u and it's a smooth version. What's the difference? What's the error? And this, uh, it does require some calculus and uh, we can write down this uh, u minus u epsilon. We write it as uh, this um, uh, convolution kernel and then look that there's an average outside, but there's no average inside. So then use uh, uh, the quartz schwarz inequality, we can lead to uh, a sequence of identity or inequality, then uh, leads to this, um, the difference between ux minus uy. Okay, and because of this average, we can pull out this average, multiply by epsilon 2s, and then divided by epsilon n plus 2s. And this epsilon, since x and y are in this ball, so epsilon is uh, bigger than x minus y. And hence this will be bounded by epsilon 2s times e. Okay. So this is the extension of the interpolation inequality uh, in the, in the non-local case. And okay, so, uh, so there's a final remark that uh, the um, estimate is that you have two terms. One is one over epsilon, and one is epsilon to the power of two s. There's a type of two s epsilon to the power two s. So if you minimum optimize the uh, epsilon to get the minimum value, then you get the right uh, uh, inequality e times s to the two l to two s bounded uh, from here. Okay. So that's a uh, that's the key. And then every then the, the what comes next is uh, followed fairly closely to uh, mm, the Kung uh, auto. Uh, Kung Otto's uh, strategy. So we have this dissipation inequality. So here, this computation is uh, everything makes sense uh, uh, for the diffuse interface, not the sharp interface model. So we can also do it for the sharp limit, uh, non local uh, moving circuit. Then you just need to consider a weak notion of um, uh, a weak, weak formulation of a non local. Um, and so that, that can be done. But here, um, I just, uh, for simplicity, just do it 
so that we don't need to worry about uh, uh, weak derivative. So then the any uh, so then uh, the dynamics is a uh, uh, fixed law. Then energy uh, time derivative is equal to negative of the flux square. Then uh, by duality, um, then uh, we can have the length at two time difference is bounded by the integral of the flux. And if this is true, then the L dot is bounded by the, the flux at each term. Um, or, or weakly at point-wise, in a weak sense, is L dot is bounded by the integral of uh, uh, the flux and bounded by uh, energy dot to the one half. So that 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 is uh, this approach is uh, basically the same as uh, Kong and Otto. And then there's uh, this uh, slightly more detail, but I, I think uh, because of time, I won't get into the, uh, the the calculus. So with one and two, with this. Uh, um, Link scale, uh, this uh, interpolation inequality plus this uh, dissipation inequality, then by the, this ODE lemma, then we lead to the, the desired statement. Okay, so that's basically the key statements that I would like to present. And along the way, I of course I point out there are some uh, technical considerations that. Uh, so at this current stage, uh, we are not able to resolve. Um, all the details, but I, I think uh, we feel we don't need to wait till all the existence and well postness result to be resolved in order to understand the equation. So there are some um, uh, technical considerations, and then if we really want to close the loop, then all these uh, technical statements need to be proved. But uh, I think uh, there are sufficient evidence that uh, all point to the right direction. So let me ma mention, point, uh, point out a few questions. Some of you might be interested to uh, take a look. So this is uh, interpolation inequality. So I say that, uh, strictly speaking, we don't know how to prove this when s is bigger than 1 half, uh, between 1 half and 1. So uh, this is uh, purely uh, based on technical difficulty. And even though it's uh, um, more local, when S is big, um, but it's more singular. So, uh, and then we don't have the classical Modica Motola um, results for the non local uh, and account function. So, what we have, we just make use of the, we just prove the results, uh, prove the result for the classical, uh, for the BV case. So, if you, if some, any one of you will have some idea or reference, um, we'll be glad to, to discuss. Then, of course, uh, another thing is uh, this uh, well postness, uh, existence, and uniqueness of solution of these non local Kahn equations. This is also, uh, I, I don't think there's any result uh, for these equations. And for the local case, there are results by Garkey and Elliott. They prove a weak uh, existence of weak solutions. Uh, then, of course, uh, there's also many questions uh, existence and uniqueness of uh, even the weak solution, even for the local case, is not. Um, uh, completely settled. Okay, so then another question is that uh, sharp interface limit, does it really converge to a non-local mullins circuit? Then again, it is not known, but uh, let me point out a couple of uh, results that points to the right direction. For uh, Alan Khan, uh, there is a work by uh, Imbert and Suganidis. Uh, they did show that a non-local Alan Khan when S is bigger than one half, uh, converge to the motion by mean curvature. And heuristically, I mean, uh, it should be true that when S is less than one half, but again, there's some technical reason because of the long tail, um, uh, it's not uh, completely settled. But I think, again, everything is points to the right direction. And even, uh, and then in the, as I mentioned earlier, there's a work, uh, uh, Cabrelli and Sukinides for the non-local mean curvature. I mean, they show the convergence to non-local mean curvature uh, for all values of S, not uh, for S less than one half. Then um, it, uh, another result that I will point out is Amila, Seri, and Wang. They show that uh, the first variation of the non-local energy does converge to non-local mean curvature. So this uh, set the stage that you can do for the, like Sandias uh, Safati's work, that uh, for Sandias Safati, uh, not just uh, therefore for the convergence of gradient flow, not only they need gamma convergence, they need uh, convergence of sort of C1 gamma convergence, they need the convergence of the derivative of the energy. And here this results and prove for S is between zero and one half and exactly leads to give us the right uh, starting point 
that uh, it should be the correct statement. Okay. And then with, with this, then of course, uh, the general sc scheme, um, uh, then I think it, it is reasonable that uh, there's a various approach that you can do and then there are one or two. So uh, Ro Roger, they use uh, variational uh, time discretization, like uh, Umbrun Taylor Wang, a minimization movement and the Lockhouse and Sturzenhager. Uh, each time stepping, uh, each time they use a variational minimization, they prove the existence of a weak uh, solution of a local uh, modeling circuit. And then uh, Lee Nam, they, uh, they, uh, he used, uh, like exactly used the uh, Sandia Safati's approach uh, to show that this kind helium equation in the local case converts to local modeling circuit. Uh, uh, so Sandia Safati is, uh, the approach is more or less as, uh, as, as a strategy to prove, uh, to use this strategy, you need to prove. Uh, uh, two, uh, a couple of um, two, two estimates, and then Linem does uh, succeed to improving those estimates. And but he does require quite a bit of regularity. For example, the, the limit is uh, C three and so forth. Okay, but uh, as I point out, uh, even though these all these issues are not completely resolved at this stage, but they all point to the right direction. And uh, and our result is also is as a self consistency check that uh, it, it is the correct thing. Okay, so to close, uh, let me go back to the first uh, picture. Um, I mean, it's uh, very interesting to look at how pictures evolve and how the microstructures evolve. And this uh, length scale is just a uh, one scalar function, uh, one number. And it's nice to know that it grows correctly and we can prove it or people can prove it in various settings. But uh, it's, it would be more interesting to look at actual the spatial description or spatial distribution of the pattern. So um, is it possible to have uh, actually to prove the self-similarity structure of the actual spatial pattern? So that's, uh, I mean, it seems uh, uh, it's also quite um, not so easy. I mean, there are various results uh, um, when people study this kind of uh, pattern, uh, energy-driven pattern formation, what they can show that the energy density around the whole space more or less remains constant. So the link scale remains uh, sort of like a, a constant across different points. So, but uh, if uh, but I'm just wondering if uh, if the link scale initially is has a vastly different link scale in different space and time, whether they will equilibrate, and how fast is the equilibrium? So these kind of questions will poke more into the spatial pattern, not just as a number, even not just as a number described by the link scale. Um, okay, so uh, I hope this uh, this will give you uh, some idea of uh, of this uh, area, and then uh, I'm also happy to discuss. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you for your attention, and thanks for uh, IPEN for the uh, organization and uh, invitation. Okay, so thanks.